This is my home bay on Nova Scotia's south shore, one of many picturesque towns that are dotted along this stretch of beautiful rugged coastline. My journey is going to take in a hunt for missing millions, some nautical naughtiness and also some stunning scenery. But first of all, if any birds are watching, look away now. The Scarecrow Festival is a celebration of harvest on the south shore of Nova Scotia. We decorate the whole town with all these wonderful characters. Townsfolk make their own to decorate their lawns and it's a great fun time. We do have um, a group of scarecrows that represent the royal family. When uh, Charles and Camilla were married we did a very special group somebody from England took a picture of it and, it and the picture of the royal family as scarecrows ended up in a newspaper in England. As you've probably guessed already, a drive down Nova Scotia's south shore throws up plenty of stories and perhaps the most intriguing tale of all can be found a stone's throw from my home bay at Oak Island. For over 200 years, people have been searching for treasure here, believed by some to have been left by pirates. The search centres around the money pit. It's, it's my opinion that the Money Pit area is and was de purposely designed to be a decoy and to keep people's attention located at that one, uh, more or less that one spot. If it's finally concluded that the Money Pit is a decoy, then value-wise what they left on the island or concealed boggles the mind of, of the possibilities. My own personal opinion is it would put uh, King Tut's tomb uh, as a very, very small find in comparison. For over 200 years, the money pit has been firing people's imaginations. Hundreds of people have come here, millions has been spent, but for most of them, the quest has been futile. But who knows, one day someone may strike gold and I'm off to get my shovel. Just south from Oak Island is Lunenburg. It was first settled by Europeans in the mid-18th century and its economy was built on fishing and shipping. However, during the 20s and 30s, the main years of prohibition in Canada and the USA, the locals turned to less legal ways of making money. Rim running was the illegal transportation of alcohol during the prohibition era. So when we're talking about rim running, we're focusing on the decade of the 1920s into the early 30s. It happened because there was an economic downturn. So the decision a fisherman had to make at that time was, well, I could go fishing for six months and make $75, or I could go rum running for two weeks and make the same amount of money. But back now to the straight and narrow, the scallops around here taste fantastic, so you've got to know how to shuck one properly. Captain Gerard Holden is a bit of an expert, and he offered to help me out. Right, so uh, here we are, uh, in the left hand, knife uh, in right hand. Oh, I've already done it wrong. You made it look very, very easy, Gerard. Oh, goodness me, this is a rotten effort, this truly is. <laughs> I've got my bucket full of, uh, well, at least one amateurishly done scallop. It might taste very interesting indeed. Who's to say? I reckon it'll still be very tasty. Yes, I think I did a very, be. very good job. Yeah. Gerard, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Pleasure. Let's go and eat. <laughs> Sadly, no shucking future for me. The next stop on the South Shore, though, is somewhere with a familiar ring to it. It's Liverpool. Well, if you're looking for similarities between the Liverpool here and the Liverpool in England, well, first of all, you've got the Mersey River, which flows through the town. And also, I've tracked down four lads called John, Paul, George and Ringo. We're going to have a history lesson. The King's Orange Rangers arrived in Liverpool, supposedly to make sure that the town stayed safe from privateers who rampaged up and down the coastline in the 18th century. However, it's also thought that they were sent here to keep the locals loyal to the King, and they weren't afraid of a bit of privateering themselves. This reenactment group keeps the memory very much alive and are always willing to accept a new member. Prepare to halt. Prepare. Halt. Prime and load. Make ready, present. So there's an horizon full of privateers and it's my job to make sure they get no further. Fire! 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 Fire. There are no pirates anymore. Present! Fire! 
Well, thankfully, I'm not very handy with the gun and I didn't shoot the cameraman, which meant that we safely reached our final destination, White Point Beach. The coastline of the South Shore, reaching from Halifax out to Yarmouth, is a dynamic coastal region that um, is a throwback to the old days where you can walk out on the wharf and talk to the fishermen. You can stroll into the uh, stores and you're greeted with a, a wide smile and a big hello. It's local people. We share a common tradition here along the shoreline and uh, as the seasons change, we're still here and we're tried and true. This is one of many beautiful beaches on Nova Scotia's South Shore and another reason why it's well worth making the trip over here. Sadly, my visit has come to an end and although it's less than six hours back home by plane, there are other ways of making the journey. <laughs>